As a Christian, it's sometimes hard to find time for Jesus. Becoming a Christian, accepting Christ as Savior, being born again, whatever words you use to describe or define your relationship with God, they denote a commitment. In aligning yourself with Jesus, you are committing to be faithfully obedient to Him. But are you? Are you truly committed? Or is your relationship with Jesus like your membership at the fitness club, in name only? Jesus wants, no. He expects, even demands more from us than a name-only commitment. Time and again we see in God's word that to be in Christ is who you are, not what you do. In this video, we are going to talk about the different ways you can use to start making time for Jesus. You will learn how to find time for Jesus today. Hello ladies, I know that as a Christian it can be hard to make time for Jesus. But in this video, I'm going to teach you some tricks that will make it easy for you to have more time with God and get closer to Him than ever before. So you can make sure your time with God never goes unnoticed because the Christian life can be hectic and demanding. Let's get into it. Jesus said to, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. What does that mean? And how do we take it? It simply means we need to make time for Jesus, not just when life slows down. Let's talk about it. Number 1. Making time for Jesus at home. You may be asking yourself, how do I make time for Jesus at home? You may be thinking, it's hard because there are always distractions that come up, and it can be difficult to get the right balance between my work life and my family life. Life is busy, we know that. But you cannot allow your life to become too busy to recognize, communicate, and serve your Lord and Savior, Jesus. It starts with an attitude of acknowledgement. Romans chapter 1 verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. When you acknowledge Jesus as the giver of life and all its blessings, you will be more inclined to give thanks throughout the day. Give thanks for your home, as you put away the laundry, empty the dishwasher, flip on the lights and feel the water run down your back as you shower. Also, be more aware of what you allow into your home, TV shows, music, books, social media, and things of this nature. James chapter 4 verse 8 Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Don't just live life, pray it. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 8 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Pray for wisdom. Pray for answers. Pray for guidance. Making time for Jesus in your home doesn't require you to find extra hours in the day. It simply means including Jesus, making Him a part of each part of your day. Talking to God about the big, little, and in-between things of life. Testing the decisions you make according to what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 3 verse 16 Recognizing God as the Lord of your life through your faith and obedience to His will. Jesus warns us against being lukewarm. Don't let this be you. Make time for Jesus all day every day. Number 2. Making time for Jesus at work. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Jesus spoke these words to his disciples just before he returned to heaven. His disciples were fishermen, a tax collector, an anti-governmental radical, and a man who could have been from Missouri, he had to see it to believe it. Do you notice that none of these men were training to be in the ministry before Jesus called them? That didn't matter though. When Jesus called they answered. They were willing to make time for Jesus while they worked. They made time for Jesus at work by being like Jesus at work, and you can too. It can be hard to find time for Christ in the hustle of day-to-day -day life. But despite your hectic schedule, you can carve out space from your busy work week and make time for Jesus. 
You may be asking yourself, once again, how do I make time? Your commitment to Jesus is real and effective at work. Let's discuss four ways. 1. Refuse to participate in office gossip and backstabbing. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. 2. Give your best efforts to your work. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. 3. Be above reproach. And that includes not taking office supplies because, they'll never miss them, or, they owe me that much. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. 4. Make sure that whatever career path you choose, will not dishonor God or cause anyone to doubt the genuineness of your proclaimed faith. So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians, 1031. As a Christian, you are a reflection of Jesus to the unbeliever and unsaved. Who you are is who they think Jesus is. And to your brothers and sisters in Christ and the church as a whole, you are to set an example of faithful obedience. In other words, making time for your commitment to Jesus. Think before you speak. Consider the outcome of your actions before you act. Remember that your lifestyle and the choices you make are a reflection of your heart, your true heart. Number 3. Making time to get to know Jesus better. As a woman entrepreneur with a deep desire to know Jesus better. I started this blog because I want you to know him too, and I believe that making time for him is where it all starts. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. You seek out God's kingdom by spending time with him studying his word. I want you to think back to the day you took, and passed, your driver's test. Oh what a glorious day! What a milestone! What freedom! It didn't just happen though did it? You practiced driving. You drove, no pun intended, your parents nuts asking them to let you drive whenever the car left the garage. You learned to back out of parking places. You learned to yield, merge, wait your turn at four-way stops and all those other things that come naturally to you now. You practiced because more than anything else you wanted to hear the words, you passed. Now I want you to think about what happened after you heard those two magic words and had a license in hand with the all smiles picture. What did you do after that? Did you throw caution to the wind and start driving on your own terms, instead of continuing to obey the rules of the road? Of course not. You didn't because you know it doesn't work like that. In order to keep the privilege of having a driver's license you have to know and follow the rules. Well guess what? Being a Christian is a lot like driving. Why? Because after you become a Christian you can't just go your own way, living life on your own terms. You have to live like Jesus, and the only way to live like Jesus is to make time to know him up close and personal. Are you beginning to see the pattern here? Here are eight things that you can start doing today. 1. Read and study the Bible. The benefits of reading the Bible are numerous. For one thing, it can deepen your understanding of God's love and creative plan to redeem humanity. You might also find that you have a stronger sense of gratitude for what he has done in your life, when we read his words from scripture with an open heart. The many blessings in store for those who study their Bibles outweigh any inconveniences or time constraints they may face because this is such a valuable pursuit. 2. Listen to the Bible on audio. When you're feeling stressed and need a break, listen to the Bible on audio. One of my favorite ways to relax is by listening to my favorite scripture passages, in an engaging voice that's deep. 3. Join a Bible study. Joining a Bible study is one of the most rewarding decisions you can make. It is not only an opportunity to grow closer with God but also gives us faith in knowing that we know what's right and wrong when it comes down to tough situations. The benefits of joining a Bible study are twofold firstly, religion plays such a huge role in our lives, as believers, so much more than just going through the motions at church on Sundays. 
The gospel changes everything about who we are from how we live our days out to understanding why bad things happen all around us. Joining these groups helps strengthen your spiritual life because they provide accountability for everyday living situations, while giving advice on ways Christians should be responding accordingly during this time period. Everyone deserves a couple of hours a week getting away from work, the kids, and the other business we call life. And what better way to spend that couple of hours than getting to know Jesus and your brothers and sisters in Christ better? 4. Memorize a few key and favorite verses, and yes, you can do it. Am I the only one who can't seem to recite anything from memory? It's not that hard right? The benefits of memorizing a few key and favorite Bible verses will shatter your assumption. Do you know what Psalm chapter 23 says about walking with God in our valley or Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 verse on forgiving those who trespass against us? Memorize something worth repeating. In the Bible, there are many verses that can be used to encourage yourself. It is a great idea to memorize some of them so you always have something uplifting and encouraging available no matter what life throws at you. In addition, when people hear these passages quoted back they will feel better about themselves as well. The benefits of doing this could last for years or even generations if shared with others. 5. Pray. Prayer has a calming effect on both the speaker and listener. It can help us to feel less stressed, sleep better at night, be more patient with others when we are angry or discouraged, find peace in our hearts amidst tragedy or sorrow. Prayer calms speakers down as well as listeners because, it allows them to focus their attention inward rather than outwardly towards, stressful situations they're trying not to think about, but still have some concerns over. Prayer gives people faith that there is someone who will listen no matter what, and give guidance through tough times without judging, sometimes even before things happen. Jesus tells us to come to him in prayer, and that he will speak, answer, console, and counsel so pray simple prayers throughout your day. Pray as if Jesus is by your side having a heart-to-heart, one-on-one conversation, because you are. 6. You can serve. There is a lot to think about when it comes to thinking through what you really want out of your future. For many, this means considering their personal relationship with God, and how they can use that faith in order to serve Him as best they know how. Be it by volunteering at church fundraisers, donating time away from work for charity events during holidays like Thanksgiving or Christmas, giving blood donations regularly, or even just praying. People who have served for years talk about their time as being some of the most fulfilling times ever experienced while living life. Not only does Jesus always give back more than he takes but he provides us with peace unlike any found elsewhere too. So don't be afraid to use your talents to serve others in the name of Jesus. 7. Be a part of your church more than just a Sunday seat warmer. Every person makes a difference to their church. The worship service isn't just the fellowship of believers through song and prayer, but also those who make it come alive with welcome greetings each week. They share in communion, and at Sunday dinner afterward as well. Or whatever the activity may be, you get what I'm saying. Even though you may not know how to do everything, there are plenty of opportunities for hands-on experience. Get involved with the work your church does as a way to get closer to God, and those around you while also fulfilling your duties as an active member of society today. Making a commitment to Jesus requires you to follow the rules for godly living. It's a great honor to know that our lives are in His hands and we have the opportunity to live an obedient life by following God's Word. It is so tempting for people today, even Christians who want nothing more, than to please Jesus Christ, with their whole heart, body, mind, and soul and to turn away from living according to Him because it seems too hard or not worth the effort, when they see other people around them enjoying themselves without feeling guilty, about breaking rules all of the time. But this temptation should be recognized as Satan trying once again to tear us down, before he has finished his attack on us through various demons working within him like unbelief, misery, etc. A messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. You can't do that, unless you know what Jesus' definition and expectations for godly living are. And the only way you can know these things is to make your commitment to him a priority. Your top priority. Is he yours? Number 4. Making time to share Jesus with others. 
Years ago a young country doctor who was just starting his career, was faced with an outbreak of typhoid in the small farming community he settled in. Within the first few days of arriving, and putting out his shingle, nearly a dozen people came to see him, all of whom had typhoid. He knew what it was. He knew how to treat it. The question was had he gotten there in time? Unfortunately for three families, the answer was no. One family lost two of their three small children to the disease by the end of the young doctor's first month there. He was devastated. In his heart and mind, he was a complete failure. He tried to move beyond the emotional pain and defeat, but he couldn't. A few months later without saying a word, he left to live out the rest of his life working as a farmer, and determined to not tell anyone what he really was. Fast forward a few years. The young doctor fell in love and got married. Before long the couple was expecting a baby. When the time came for the baby to be born, he called for the local midwife to help his wife deliver their child, because not even she, his wife, knew of her husband's medical profession. There were complications and the midwife told the man that he had to choose whether to save his wife or the baby. When he was told why he was being made to choose, he knew it didn't have to be that way. He knew it was possible to save both mother and child. But did he dare try? What if he failed, again? No. He couldn't let his selfish fears keep him from sharing life with the woman he loved and their child. So without saying a word he went into the room, where his wife was laying, and took matters into his own skilled hands, and within minutes, handed their son to his wife, who was both amazed and thankful for the man who was her husband. So I ask you, what is keeping you from sharing Jesus with others? We are all too quick to give the excuse, of being too busy to take the time to share the good news, of the gospel with others. But is it just that? Or is it fear? Embarrassment? Timidity? Feelings of inadequacy? Whatever it is it's rubbish. And. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. James. 122. When you accept Jesus as your Savior, you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. You have no reason to be afraid, shy, or incapable of being able to show and tell others the good news. The Holy Spirit will do it for you, working through you. Just like the doctor had to get out of the way of his own fears and uncertainties, you have to get out of the way and let Jesus work in and through your life. Number 5. Making time for Jesus a priority. Paper or plastic, are you even offered that choice anymore? Debit or credit, that's a phrase we're all familiar with. Sweet or unsweet tea. We are all faced with multiple choices every single day of our lives. Most of them we make without putting much, if any, thought into what we're doing. It's as if we are on autopilot. But why do you make the choices you make? The answer to that question is simple. The choices we make are based on our wants or desires. Now I know some of you are shaking your head in disagreement. Some of you are saying that many of the choices you make are out of necessity. But, if you would rather use the rent money for a vacation, you do have a choice. You don't want to take money out of savings to fix the air conditioner in your house but you want to. No, really you don't. You don't have to fix the air conditioner. People lived for centuries without it. You may even grown up in a house without it, yet here you are alive and healthy. So no, you don't have to fix it. You choose to fix it. And as for rent versus a vacation, you don't have to pay the rent, but you don't want to have to suffer the consequences of not doing so, so you pay it. Now ask yourself what is the most important and urgent thing in your life? Because. Making a commitment to Jesus requires you to follow the rules for godly living. And following these guidelines can help make time spent with God more meaningful as well, as bringing peace of mind into this chaotic world, that so often makes it difficult just getting through each hectic 24-hour cycle. So how about making Jesus one of your priorities today no matter what's going on around you? Remember, making time for Jesus is also a choice you have to make. It's also a choice that is only yours to make. To sum it up. Whether you make time to be the person Jesus has called you to be is up to you. It is up to you to make it a priority in your life, or not. Your food isn't going to turn cold or rancid in the time it takes to offer a prayer of thanks. 
You won't be asked to leave a restaurant when you pray over your food, either. You cannot be forbidden from reading your Bible, during your lunch hour or while sitting on a bench in the park while your kids play. Neither the grass nor the lawnmower will care if you wait until after church on Sunday to mow the yard. Your children won't be banished from society if you refuse to allow them to play sports on Sundays, instead of attending church service. The laundry will still be there and the dog won't suffer if you spend an hour or two serving on a ministry team or attending a Bible study once or twice a week. And do you want to know something truly amazing and marvelous? Jesus promises that if we seek him first, he will bless us with all these other things, less stress, time to get things done. It's true. Jesus promises us that and when he makes a promise he keeps it. So as you plan your day, or planning your life remember this. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Being a Christian woman I know that we are sometimes too busy to make time for Jesus. As women we juggle the demands of work, family, church, and community volunteering all while trying to have some semblance of personal downtime. It is hard enough to find time to fit in our own spiritual needs but when we add the needs of those around us then there often isn't any room left for Jesus. The Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, so if we don't prioritize our relationship with God then it won't be healthy or strong. Jesus said that when two people agree on earth about anything they ask for, their prayer it shall be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. So the question is where are you storing up your treasures? You've done it, you made it through this entire video. You have finally committed to making time for Jesus and, start living your life fully and completely to our Lord. This is an important decision, but one that has been made with much consideration, for what you need in this world as opposed to previous commitments like family or work. It's now time for you to take a moment, and reflect on all of these things while also making sure there are no other aspects left unresolved before committing yourself 100%. One thing I would recommend doing at this point is expressing gratitude not only towards God who helped guide you here, but everyone else too, family friends and co-workers alike because without them where would we be? For me, this special honor goes to my grandmother, Evelyn Smith, God rest her soul, for it is she who planted the seed and led me to Jesus. God bless godly grandmothers everywhere. Thanks so much for watching, we hope you found this video helpful. We will see you in our next video. Goodbye.